In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating some of the functionality of the Polygon Data API using Python. And uh, I am going to be using the free account, and there are some limitations there, but this will give you an idea of, okay, I like the Polygon approach, and, and then you can decide whether or not to subscribe to one of their paid services. All right, so I've already logged into my free account. And okay, so I can go to the dashboard and you can see, yes, the API key is here. You can access some documentation here or you can get it from the menu up at the top here. And, and just note there's there's two different kinds of calls. All right, web sockets is for streaming data. Okay, that's not available for free. And then, okay, the, what I'm gonna be demonstrating here is the REST API. And that gives you two years of historical data or a maximum of 50,000 data points so uh, the data can get down to the second level okay you can get the last 50,000 seconds of market data for free all right so if we go in there we can just click into the rest documentation and, and they actually give you an example of a call here so if you wanted to you could just copy this right and I open a new tab here and paste it in and we can see what we get back. All right, so the example just gives you, okay, one day of Apple, and right, if I transform that into uh, an actual date, I would see that it was yesterday's Apple price. All right, so yeah, you could, if you know Python pretty well, you can use the request library there and make a standard API call. But what I'm gonna be doing is using their helper library. All right, and I'm gonna do that in a notebook here. All right, so I'll actually run it and it'll tell me it's already installed, but you'll see some different messages here. All right, so it happens pretty fast. Uh, once that's installed, then we're going to go ahead and import it. I'm also going to import pandas. All right, so I'm just getting this REST client and uh, then we're ready to create a client object and it requires the API key. I've stored mine in an external file and so I'll just read that into a variable and then we'll uh, instantiate the uh, client object. Okay, all right, so now we're ready to get data and we just have to figure out what data do I wanna get. I'll just get some Apple price data for about the last month as of this video. All right, and when you get the data back for every day, I'm gonna get an ag object all right, a custom object from Polygon. Okay, so then I'm just gonna make a loop and store every day in that AGS list. All right, so I'm gonna go call my client and then with the dot I can see all the different kinds of calls I can make here. All right, a lot of these are only available under the paid service, okay, but uh, I can get AGS. All right, and then I have to tell it the ticker I have to tell it uh, how frequent I want to go and get the data. So that's the multiplier. And I'm gonna use daily, so it's one, but I could change this to five, 10, whatever. Multiple of days you want to get your data in. And then I have to tell it time span. Right, I'm gonna get daily, but I could do second, I can do minute, I can do week, month. Okay, lots of options here. And then I have to tell it a from and a to. And so I'm just gonna get about the, the last a month's worth of data as of this video. Okay, we're gonna loop over that and just append it. All right, let's see what we get when we do all that. Okay, so you can see our list and then yep, there's one of those ag objects and you can see all of the data points in there, right? The typical stuff, open, low, high, close, volume. All right, but uh, we have a couple of nice uh, additions here. We have volume weighted average price, and then we have the number of transactions uh, in that in that day. All right, not a lot I can do with this, right? Obviously I can uh, do things like peel off a single observation. Okay, there's one. I can get any of the data points in there, right? So I can ask for the close. Uh, but uh, working with it beyond that, it, it becomes a little bit cumbersome. So I'm going to transform it into a more usable format. All right, so I'm gonna make a new list object here and I'm going to loop through it. So for A, okay, so I am going to add it into the list and uh, I'm going to add it in uh, dictionary form. 
All right, and then I'll just spread stuff out so we can read it a little better. All right, so for reference, we can see what's there. All right, so I'll start down here. We got a date column, and that is the ag.timestamp. Okay, and then just add a, a key and a value for every item in that list. And it doesn't really matter what order I put them in, but I'm just going to put it in one that we're familiar with here. And that's the way they'll end up in my final version, which is going to be a data frame. Okay, let's try that. And uh, let's see what we end up with here. Okay, so we get a list of dictionaries. And then uh, from there, right, I can easily transform that into a pandas data frame okay and then the only thing left to do here is probably convert this date to something that's more readable all right so I will take the Apple index and reset it and uh, I'm going to be using this convenience function to date time and that's the date all right and uh, this is in milliseconds so that. All right, and then I'm going to access the date time utilities here and just get the date because the, the time isn't going to be really useful. Okay, and then when I'm done with all that, I'll get rid of the date column. Okay, and let's see what we end up with. There we go, our transform date. Okay, so now we can do whatever we want with this. All right, pretty easy to probably write a function that does some of that stuff, some of that transformation. And then, okay, we can quickly make API calls and, and then transform the data into a, a usable format. All right, so I, I mentioned that you can get data down to the seconds here. I'm going to give another example of getting it minute by minute. All right, and uh, I also mentioned that we bump into uh, this uh, data limitation with the free account of 50,000 uh, minutes in this case. All right, so I went ahead and pre-wrote the code here. So I will make the call, and then I will do the quick transformation. All right, so now it is in that dictionary. And then right, if I want to get the data frame, OK, so it looks like that. And then, yep, yeah, we know how to transform that timestamp into something more readable. Okay, replace that integer based index with to date time. Again, the data is in milliseconds. And then I, I will leave the time on there because we actually probably want to see the time in this case. And then when I'm done, just drop the column that I don't need. OK, so. Oops, I forgot to drop it in place. OK, so now let's just look at the last few rows so I can uh, see if I actually got all the data that I requested. OK, so it goes to 9.5, right? And I, I think I asked for up to 9.23, right? So obviously, I bumped into that 50,000 minute uh, limit. But you can see, yep, we got uh, every minute going back uh, about three months here for Apple. Okay, so that, that's pretty nice. Uh, if you're doing second data, I think you get a few days worth there. Okay, so uh, if you really need the data, then yeah, you might have to subscribe. All right, another nice thing, and the last thing I will uh, I'll cover here is, oh, you can get all of the prices uh, with a single call uh, from the end of a day. Okay, so I'll just set a variable, call it prices, and Right, I'm using the client again, and this time I'm going to use get grouped daily ags. Okay, and then you have to tell it when when you want the data from. So I'll get yesterday's. I don't think it will let me get today's yet anyway because the market is still open. And then uh, we have a switch here if you want to include or exclude uh, OTCs. Okay, so there's a default there. And if I remember, the default is false, so I'm going to get the OTCs here. And OK, so let's see how long that takes. Not too bad, right? And then let's see what we get. All right, so for every 
uh, security that they're tracking here. All right, we get the ticker, right, open, low, high, close, and, and that kind of stuff. So similar data. And then uh, if you want to see how many data points they have, we can just call prices. And uh, OK, 14.5, right? And if I exclude the OTCs here, we can see the difference. OK, about 4,000 over the counter uh, securities in there. OK, so that should help you get started. I'm going to make this notebook available on GitHub. And then I'm going to come back and, and follow up with a, a video on getting option prices. So if you're interested in options trading, uh, you may want to uh, tune in for that one. But for now, I hope this helps.